Hey guys, question from Adapt Tuition here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question one from the Jan 2015 PUA paper two. If you want to see the solutions for the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and the link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the solution. So we have a cash book question, and as per usual, we're going to take a read of the information. So it starts off by telling us Walter presented the following transactions for the month of March 2013. So of course, they want us to fill out the three column cash book. So let's take a look. So on the 1st of March, we have the balances being brought forward. We have cash 270 and bank overdraft 2,965. So cash and bank are usually classified as assets. Assets have debit balances at start. The exception here is that it says bank overdraft. An overdraft is a situation that arises when you spend more money than you have in the bank account. And what the bank does essentially is lend you money to spend. So when the bank lends you money, you owe them money. Anytime you owe money, that's classified as a liability, which will have a credit balance at start. So what we're going to see in the cash book, if you take a look on the debit side, you're going to see the balance being brought forward for cash of 270. And on the credit side, you're going to see the balance for bank being 2965. Now, some of you might be saying, but Chris, how come you have the bank and the cash column switched? Shouldn't the cash be to the left of the bank column and the bank be to the right of the cash column? Normally, yes. Honestly, it doesn't make a difference. And thirdly, the question paper actually gave you it in this format. So I wanted to preserve the format. So anytime anybody was looking for the solution, it would correspond to what they have instead of them having to switch sides, so to speak. Okay, let's take a look at the second transaction here. So on the third, it says Mary, who has an account balance of $10,000, paid her account in full by check after deducting 2% cash discount. Okay, so let's unpack that. So a couple of things. So we are Walter. Mary has an account balance of 10000 means Mary owes us 10000 and she's paying her account in full by check which means that our bank is going to increase. If somebody's paying us, we are getting money. So our bank account is going up. To record an increase in an asset, because bank is an asset, you're going to have to debit bank. So on the debit side, under the bank column, we're going to put the receipt from Mary there. But how much? Because the other aspect says she deducted 2% cash discount. So you're going to find 2% of 10,000, which is 200. Then you're going to subtract it from 10,000, which will leave you with 9,800. So you're going to put that 9,008 under bank because that was the amount received by a check from Mary. Under discount allowed, you're going to put the 200, the 2% 2 of 10,000, which was the initial amount pre-discount. And on the details, you're going to put Mary and of course, put the date. Let's take a look at the transaction on the 5th. So it's a paid electricity expense by check 900. So again, we're seeing check. So we know the bank account is being affected. We are making a payment, so it means we are spending money, which means our bank account balance is going to decrease. Anytime we have to decrease the bank account, we have to credit the bank account. So you're going to see on, on the credit side, under the bank column, you're going to see 900. The details will say electricity because that is what we paid, and the date is the 5th of March. Next, on the 8th of March, we received a loan of 4,000 by check from a friend. So again, we received a loan of 4,000 by check. So by check implies bank. We got a check, we put that in our bank account, and our bank account is gonna increase because we received the loan. So we're going to debit our bank account, and you're gonna see that here. So again, on the debit side, under the bank column, you're gonna see 4,000 because that's how much came in by check and it's going to say loan. Now you can put loan from a friend, etc., etc. but we're debiting bank because bank is increasing. Okay, let's take, a, let's take a look at the next transaction. Okay, so on the 10th, we're seeing cash sales, 2,300. Right, so we finally have a transaction affecting cash. So if we make cash sales, we are earning money and money is coming in. So our cash is going to increase, which will therefore necessitate an entry on the debit side under the cash column. Why? Because if we make a sale and we get cash, cash is increasing. Cash is an asset. To record an increase in an asset, you have to debit the asset account. Of course, the details will say sales because that's where the money is coming from. Okay, on the 11th now, we are seeing paid land gain, a creditor, 2,910 by check, having deducted a 3% cash discount. Oh, this is a nice one. So first things first, let's calculate the amount of that discount. Now, I know some of you might say, okay, well, we just have to find 3% of 2,910. Uh-uh, that's not what we do because it said, we paid land gain 2910 by check, having deducted a 3% cash discount, which means we already deducted the 3% from whatever amount we owed, and that left us with the amount being paid of 2910. 
So 2,910 is the amount actually paid after having deducted discount. So how do we find that discount? Well, we make a note of the percentage. It was 3%. If you get a cash discount of 3%, it means you are paying 97% relative to what was owed. And what you actually paid, 2,910, will represent that 97%. So if 2910 is 97%, we could scale it back up to the 100% by dividing 2910 by 97%. That's going to give us, I think, um, 3000. And then if we find 3% of 3000, we are going to get $90. And 3000 minus 90 will give us 2910. And that's going to go on the credit side. Why on the credit side? Because we are making a payment by check, which means our bank account is decreasing. Bank is an asset. To record a decrease in an asset, you're going to have to credit the asset account. Discount received is a revenue, and that will have a credit balance, so we're going to put that on the credit side as well. And of course, we're paying land gain. Okay, let's take a look at the next transaction. So on the 15th, we're seeing we transferred 2500 from bank to cash. So this is a contra entry because money is moving between bank and cash. So if we're taking it out of bank, it means bank is decreasing. To record a decrease in bank, you have to credit bank because bank is an asset. And to record a decrease in an asset, you have to credit the asset account. So you're going to see 2,500 here. Under folio, you're going to make sure to put your C to record that it is a contra entry. It's a transfer to cash. And on the debit side, under the cash column, you're going to see the corresponding entry, 2,500 under cash. And you're debiting cash because you're sending money to cash, which is going to increase cash. Cash is an asset. To record an increase in an asset, you have to debit the asset account. Of course, on the folio, you're going to see C, which tells the person reading the cash book that it is a contra entry. The money came from bank. All right, let's take a look at the next transaction, shall we? So it says paid wages in cash, 3,200. So if we're making a payment out of cash, cash is decreasing. Cash is an asset. To record a decrease in an asset, you have to credit the asset account. So you're going to see on the credit side, under the cash column, 3,200. What did we pay? We paid wages on what day? The 70th of March, St. Patrick's Day. Nice. Next transaction. On the 22nd, Andy, a creditor, was paid for 1425 in cash after allowing Walter a discount of 75. Okay, so that's a relatively easy one. We made a payment to Andy in cash. So we just thought about making payments out of cash. We're going to go on the credit side under the cash column and put the entry there. So you're going to see 1425 discount received is 75 because they tell us that Walter, um, Andy gave Walter this one of 75 and we paid Andy. So that's the details. And finally, we have on the 28th cash withdrawn for personal use $200. So anytime the owner withdraws any resource for personal use, that's classified as drawings. And if the asset of cash is decreasing, we're going to have to credit cash. So on the credit side and under the cash column, you are going to see $200 there. Right, and it says drawings in the details because that's where the money went. Okay, so now we're going to total the discount columns and as well as the cash and bank columns. And of course, we're going to see that we need balances carried down from the credit side for both cash and bank. You can always pause the video and do your calculations just to double check. And of course, if it's carried down, the balances are carried down from the credit side, they're going to be brought down on the debit side. So it seems that we got enough money coming into bank to move it from being an overdraft at start to being not an overdraft at end of about 4,525. Okay, so just give me a couple of seconds. Let me rearrange my screen and we'll take a look at the next part of the question. So this is part B of the question. So it says complete the form provided below to indicate the sources of information used in the preparation of control accounts. The first item has been done for you as an example. So as you can see here, it says preparation of control accounts. We have number, item, and source of information. In the first instance, it says total credit sales, which comes from the sales day book or the sales journal. So that's basically what they want us to do. So as you can see on this side, I have a similar little table set up. I've just decreased the wording in the item column because I basically summarized what it is they're looking for to just to save on some space, all right? So the first one was total credit sales. That's found in the sales day book or the sales journal. Okay, so let's take a look at the first item here. It says total amount for goods bought on credit. Okay, so that's credit purchases. And that's going to come from the purchases journal. All right, easy enough. Next item, total amount for accounts which proved uncollectible. Okay, so that's bad debts. When you record the writing of a bad debts, you have to go in the general journal. Next, it says total value of inventory sent back by credit customers. So that's returns inwards. 
and returns in words will come from the returns in words journal. Next, right? It says total amount received from creditors for selling settling sorry accounts promptly. That sounds like discounts received, and discounts received will be found in the cash book. And finally. It says total value of inventory sent back to credit suppliers. So that's returns outwards. And that'll be found in the returns outwards journal. Okay, so yeah, so once you are familiar with your books of original entry, that piece of that question should have been pretty easy. Okay, let's take a look at the last part of the question now. Okay, so this is the last part of the question. And it says after preparation of a company's control accounts, the following errors were discovered. So the first item says credit purchases of 6,000 had been posted to K. Hossein's account instead of to P. Hussein's account. All right. Next, we have credit sales of 5,290 was credited to the sales account of five, as 5,920. So it says prepare the journal entries in the form provided below to correct the errors above. Narratives are not required. Okay, so this is some correction of error stuff. Let's deal with the first one. So it says credit purchases of 6,000 had been posted to K. Hussain's account instead of to P. Hussain's account. So if you need to check out my video or my series on error correction, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. It's a very nice series, um, several videos, pacing things out, explaining things properly and in depth with many examples for you to try. I recommend you check it out if you need to. But let's go here. So this, by the way, is an error of commission because the wrong person's account has been, well, in this case, credited. Because when you make credit purchases, you're going to debit purchases and credit the creditor. So it says it was posted to Hosein's account or Hosein's account instead of to Hussein's account. So we should have credited Hussein, but we credited Hosein. So we have two things to do. One, we have to undo the wrong. And two, we have to do the right, as in what was supposed to have been done in the first place. So Hussein was credited in error. So to fix that, we have to debit his or her account. And then Hussein was supposed to be credited, but was not. So we need to credit Hussein. So as you can see, with general journal entries, the debit entry comes first, the credit entry comes second, and is indented relative to the debit entry. Now, it did say that no narration was required, so I'm not going to put the correct error of commission. But if they did not say that narratives are not required, then you need to put them in. They don't need to tell you to put narratives. Narratives are an automatic part or should be automatically included rather with journal entries, unless they tell you, as in this case, narratives are not required. So for the next error, it says credit sales of 5,290 credited to sales account is 5,920, right? This is an error affecting one account. In any case, what's going to happen is we're going to need the suspense account because only one account was affected by the error. So it's a one-sided error. So what we do is we realize that it was entered as 5920, which is higher than the amount that should have been entered of 5,290. So we were supposed to credit the sales account for 5,290, but we put 5,920, which is an overstatement of $630. So what we need to do is if we credited the sales account for too high a figure, we need to reduce it. And to do that, we have to make an entry on the opposite side. In other words, we have to debit the sales account for 630. So that's gonna be seen by this. And we will use the suspense account to provide the corresponding credit because again, it was a one-sided error, right? So it wasn't an error of transposition because that would have, uh, would have affected two accounts and not affected the trial balance, but this only affected the, what you call it, the, sp the sales account, right? So that is how you correct that error. Okay guys, so there you have it. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Don't forget to check out a couple more videos here. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so you know every time I drop a new video. Check out my website for some free POA handouts and there's a link in the description below to my Facebook page where I have free solutions for POA maths and ad maths. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.